bacteria are associated with urinary tract infections, but are they always the culprit in all situations? I mean, it's always the germ's fault or sometimes can be a weaker terrain. In this video, I will give you a different perspective about causes of urinary tract infections. For many decades, we have lived under the Hollywood storytelling of heroes and villains that influenced our vision of nature and medicine. In nature, we call pests to the insects that we don't like and eat our crops. We created pesticides to exterminate them and after decades we realized that we created very serious problems by having eliminated these insects. Our vision, heroes and villains, prevent us from realizing that we are all in the Noah's Ark, in a subtle balance, and there are no good and bad ones. We are all sons of God, or sons of the planet Earth, if that is our belief. What we destroy will have repercussions, is the butterfly effect, or law of karma. In medicine, the same thing happeneth, us against them, we against bacteria, fungi, parasites. We're going to sterilize everything, kill everything, and we created much weaker immune generations. Let's move allergenic food away from babies and children, the later the better, and we raised children and created adults with serious food allergy issues. We use antibiotics like chewing gums and we destroy the microbial heritage transmitted from mothers to children from thousands of generations, leading to immune, inflammatory and other problems. Bacteria were seen as evil creatures. Now we are beginning to see that many protect us and call them probiotic and perhaps in the near future we'll reconsider that villains are only villains under certain circumstances when the terrain favors it. Stress affects the bacteria that live with us. When we are under stress, the bacterial balance of our gut changes. Stress can cause intestinal dysbiosis, but not only. It can also alter the bacterial composition of other body barriers, giving rise to minor problems or infections. Examples of these body barriers, also called mucous membranes, are the intestine, stomach, bronchi, nose, eyes, vagina and bladder. Acute stress, defined as short-term stress, has little impact but stress that lasts for weeks or months can cause serious problems. Question: How long are you under stress? When we are under stress, much of the immune system shuts down to save energy. Several stress hormones circulate to improve our aggression response because biologically stress is a survival response is a vital program. You may think that your boss, partner or children are not trying to kill you, but the human body, faced with setbacks, responds in the same way as if he had a lion in front of it, with a survival program that we commonly know as stress. Anxiety, worry, fear are facets of this stress. So face it with situations that bother us a lot, that worry us, that interfere with our sleep, that we cannot accept, the body goes into stress, turns off part of the immune system, turns off part of the regenerative system, and remains like that until the danger is over. The longer it takes, the worse. The greater the threat we feel, the worse. When we go on vacation or the danger has subsided, the stress turns off and is replaced by the regenerative program. 
the body has a tendency to inflame. At this point, symptoms of urinary tract infection can appear. How many people have symptoms when they go on vacation or after resolving their emotional conflicts or when they feel safe again? This is exactly what is happening. There are not many studies on this subject, but in the studies that I know of, they observe that people with a high frequency of urinary tract infections tend to be more introverted, neurotic and obsessive. I think it's a bit vague and not precise, but it's a start. So, what type of stress slash emotions can cause urinary tract infection or symptoms? I will explain it in a biological way. All animals mark their territory with urine. You've seen a dog urinating against a tree or a car tire, haven't you? He was marking territory. Many mammals mark their territory with their urine, and we humans are biologically descended from them. We no longer do it, well, at least consciously, but the brain-bladder axis is still there, and whenever we fail to hold or defend our territory, we run the risk of urinary symptoms later on, when the stress is over. It is more common in women, because female brain tend to avoid confrontations, openly say what they really want, instantly stand up for themselves, and Consequently, they stay ruminating the situation. Or they leave physical abuse, real or virtual, which is their primary territory. Understanding the situations in which this happens help us to identify what we should change in our behavior. Examples. I don't like confrontations or saying what I think in public. I have to learn how to do it in the way that I am comfortable with. I get too much involved in my children's life. I must stop doing that. I allow moral abuse or disrespect at work. I need to stand up for myself. We also have to work on our self-improvement to become stronger, assertive and confident. And here, exercise, meditation and psychotherapy are amazing tools, as creating daily routines that favor the strengthening of our mind. That's why I said it is vague and inaccurate to say it affects introverted, obsessive and neurotic people. Also, I believe it can happen to anyone, given the right circumstances. The perfect storm. The mind interacts with the body in a primitive and biological way. It is our first language. It is the language of our cells. Rationality comes later. Trying to understand our body and mind from a modern perspective, from a rational perspective, doesn't work. Neither looking at microbes from a heroes against villains perspective. There is no us and them. We are all one. We are all connected. I hope you liked this video. See you in the next one.